I want to thank you for joining us today for this Sunday during the season of Easter. This is a season of celebration, a season of Easter, and we are so grateful that you decided to join us today. I notice, and you might notice, that there are many things very different today. My, my garb, I no longer have my liturgical garb on. I'm very informal today. And there's a reason for that. I mentioned to you last week it was a challenging week for me and for my family. This week, even more difficult. So I do covet your prayers. My daughter has been in the hospital all week long, and so it's been a challenging week. But I wanted to give you a word of God's blessing for today. So I hope you will accept the mini-service that we have provided for you. We begin today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you are gathered here together with us on this Sunday of Easter. We give you thanks for that. Today's celebration is not going to be the way we would like it to be. I would love there to be the liturgy and the songs, the hymns, the lessons. We're going to miss those things today. But I trust that you'll use this little service today to be a blessing to those who've decided to join in. May they be inspired by your love for them. They might have what they need to get them through this week. Most importantly, that they might be a blessing in the process. We just give you thanks for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to do this as a Bible study, I guess, today. If you would like to follow along, there is a handout that will be attached to the announcement for today's service. It is entitled, Jesus is God. Jesus isn't just a messenger from God. Jesus doesn't just speak a few nice things about God. He's not just a wise man. So where do we get this? Well, let's take a look at the appointed lesson for this Sunday of Easter. It is from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. It's earlier in Jesus' ministry, so we've, of course, been on the other side of the resurrection for these stories up until now. Now we've got to jump back, and because the resurrection now makes these stories come to life. We now know that they make sense. They probably did not. Well, actually, we know they did not. Not only to the people around that were trying to follow Jesus, to those who were perfectly on the sides trying to figure out who this Jesus was, but it didn't even make sense to Jesus' disciples until after the resurrection. But now we can go and revisit these lessons and say, oh, now it makes some sense on this side of the resurrection. See, we live in the season of Easter. Remember, Jesus' followers did not. They lived prior to the resurrection. And so these lessons were kind of confusing to them. But let's read John chapter 10. Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem, for it was winter. I'm going to stop there. The Feast of Dedication. You have probably, at least in your mind, or trying to think what festival that might be, you actually know the festival. I'm going to give you some hints. In fact, you can. I'm going to jump down to letter A and tell you what this festival is all about. The Festival of the Dedication. It was also known at that time as the Festival of Lights. Hmm, am I jogging your memory at all? So let me tell you the history of a festival of lights so you can see uh, the surrounding of what Jesus is in. It's a big holiday at the time. See, back in the day before Jesus, about 175 to 164 BC, there was a man, the king of Syria, named Antiochus Epiphanes. This man ruled over Israel at that time. And he, he wanted to eliminate the Jewish religion from the face of the planet. So he introduced Greek philosophy and Greek religion to the Jewish people. Hence one of the reasons why the Jews were very familiar with Greece and why they're very familiar with the Greek language, why a lot of our Bible is written in Greek. Many Jews resisted this. They were appalled that they had to give up their religion, their historic religion, the religion that taught them about uh, the being children of a, a father Abraham and about the gift of Moses. 
These were things that they were being asked to give up. So again, it would make sense the Jews resisted. The Syrians came down very hard upon the Jews. In fact, 80,000 Jews were murdered for having the audacity to oppose this imposition upon them. Many more were sold into slavery. It became a capital offense. Do you get it? To circumcise a child or possess the Torah, which is the Jewish Bible. Capital offense. So if you circumcised your child in the tradition of, the, of Judaism, you would have been killed for doing so. Your child would then probably be without a father, without a mother, and oh, then probably be sold into slavery. Not much of a future. The temple, which had been the place of uh, worship, Jewish worship, and of course sacrifice, was turned into a place of prostitution. Can you believe that? And the altar was turned into an altar to Zeus. And pigs, pigs, remember, pigs were sacrificed on this altar. It was one of the most offensive things that you could possibly do to Jewish religion. And that's, of course, why the king of Syria did this. Bob, but there was a man who stood up to this tyranny. Are you understanding what this day is yet? This man was named Judas Maccabeus. And he and his brother rebelled a small group of, of Jews, and they won a great victory in 164 B.C., and they cast out the Syrian army, and the temple was cleansed. At the dedication, there was only enough oil to burn at the altar for one day, but God provided, and the oil burned for eight days instead which was just enough time for more, or more oil to be consecrated to light the altar. Hmm, do you know what this holiday is now called? Hanukkah. This is the celebration at which Jesus finds himself in our lesson for today. So the festival, the Feast of Dedication of Jerusalem came. It was winter. Let's go on to verse 23. Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade, and the Jews, this is the, the, the Gentile area, and the Jews gathered around him and said, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. But Jesus said to them, I did tell you, but you just do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Who's Jesus? Are you kind of getting it right now? People weren't listening. So we have the setting of this lesson. Jesus at a big festival we call Hanukkah today. It wasn't, didn't take quite the shape and the form of what it does today. But at the temple in the court of the Gentiles, he was asked, don't keep us in suspense any longer. Who are you? Jesus is like, oh, good grief, people. You guys are dingbats. Are you kidding me? I showed you and showed you and showed you and I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, you just aren't listening. See, some people wanted to trap Jesus. Other people were very curious to know. But he just says, you guys are a bunch of blockheads. Can you believe I actually do want you to write that in your sermon handout for today? Okay, that's not exactly the way they think of it, but that's the way I think of it. Jesus is like, oh, good grief, you people, you blockheads. Weren't you listening to me? He told them in two ways. Through his miracles because nobody else could do the miracles that Jesus did. He healed a lame person and made him walk. Just prior to this, they saw something that they'd never seen before. Who has the power to do this? Oh, not only that, he demonstrated to them through his words who he was. He says, I am the light. So we're here celebrating the festival lights. I am the light. 
I'm the source of this light. How can you be any more direct than that? Oh, I didn't realize I still had my sunglasses on. Speaking of the light, blinded by the light. But some people just will not believe, no matter what one does, nor what one says. But Jesus says to those who do follow, I will do several things for them. Now, this is you, by the way. So maybe you've had a hard week. I've had a really crummy week. It's been a crummy, crummy week. But God has given me several things to see me through. This is what God's done for me. God's given me eternal life. I know where my bread is buttered. I know where I'm going to be. God has given me an indestructible life. Well, that doesn't mean that my body won't perish. But the life that God has given to me is in God's hands. Did you hear that? It's in Jesus' hands. And Jesus says that we are in God's hands. No matter what happens to us, God is going to protect us. Doesn't mean that this perishable body won't die. But God will not let the evil one take my life. My life is in God's care. So therefore, I have a secure life. Regardless of the disasters that take place today, tomorrow, I am in God's care for all of eternity. Now, maybe on this side of the resurrection, it makes some sense. You see, when we killed Jesus, we put Jesus to death and he rose again. It was a statement by God that not even death can keep God. So relentless is God's love for us that death itself cannot keep God from us. That's how relentless God is and his love is for you. Are you feeling better about your life today because of the claim that God has on your life? People might have been treating you like garbage this week. Filling you with all thought, these thoughts in your head about how you're worthless, but yet God is so relentless in his love for you that death itself cannot separate you from God. How can Jesus promise such a thing? Remember, we're on the other side of the resurrection. Now we get it. Jesus had great confidence. A confidence that only can come from one in an intimate relationship with God. Because he and God are one. One of heart. One of purpose. One of essence. And so when Jesus makes a promise to you, you can take that thing to the bank. I might make a promise to you and say, oh, I'll be there tomorrow. And sometimes I fail. Many times I fail. But when God makes a promise, you better believe there is nothing that will keep God from fulfilling that promise. And that means when Jesus promises to you that I'm keeping you in my hands, no matter how the storms and winds of this life blow against you, I will not be separated from you ever again. So what do we do then with Jesus? If he is who he claims to be, well, maybe what we need to do is listen for his voice and come and follow him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am grateful that you sustain me in my weariness. Those watching online don't understand all the things going on. It has been a terribly stressful last month or so for us, for our family. But God, you will see us through. I'm here today as a witness to that. I'm going through a very difficult challenge, but I know where my bread is buttered. I know that I am in God's care. So while I don't feel like being here today, I know I need to give witness because you're sustaining me. 
I have been given the strength to stand up and proclaim a message of hope from the lesson that we've heard for today because we believe in the resurrected King and Lord Jesus Christ. So I need to share that because this is the thing that's gotten me through this week. It's the thing that's going to get me through this next week. And I am just so grateful for that. May you do the same for those watching today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God's blessing be upon you today. May you be emboldened and strengthened in your daily walk. May you know that you are in God's care. That nothing, none of these storms that are blowing in life will ever be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is truly my hope that I will have a more full service for you next week. I don't know. Because I don't know what these next weeks are going to bring. But I will do the best to be here for you and to provide you with some sort of blessing, a message from God. And so I pray that you have been inspired by God's presence today.